Hey everybody, welcome to Friday Fruit Clips, episode number 17. So glad you could join me. As Bunny Wabbit is waking up from his nap. Uh, this is of course my weekly series where I play you some choice fruity clips of some false prophets, false teachers. And we poke a little fun because if you don't laugh, sometimes you'll go crazy. But certainly exposing the false prophets, the false teachers for bringing false doctrine. Those who would make their livings lying in the name of Jesus Christ. So we're going to play some of these clips. Some of them today you're going to see are kind of old, but that's okay. We want to document this stuff. Not everybody has seen what you've seen, and that's okay. We're going to make sure that it gets out there because we love the truth of Jesus Christ. So we're going to abide in it. So with that, get strapped in. Here we go. All right, first up, we've got Johnny Slick, Hank Kuhneman. Uh, by the way, his prophet costume is that of a casino mob boss. And boy, is that going to fit today as we listen to a couple of clips here. Now, I found this clip on, you can see, Doctrinal Watchdog. So I want to give a shout out to him with much thanks. And so with that, let's take a look at the first clip. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying. In fact, there was such an anointing that came uh, on, on, on Friday night. And as I was praying that afternoon, I said, Lord, I just want you to do something that you validate what you've given to me. And all of a sudden, as I was standing there on Friday night, I literally saw uh, out of the corner of my eye a human figure wearing a robe walk right around me. I knew it wasn't an angel. And I could see a beard and a mustache as it went fast. And it was Jesus. And, and I, I stopped and I said, Jesus, you're here. And you could feel the atmosphere immediately shifted. So the anointing of preservation is upon you. Now, how do we know when the glory shows up that God, man, there's something moving around me. That's wow. I don't care if you saw that. I just saw somebody standing right here. Maybe it's the Lord himself. Come on, Jesus. All right, folks, you saw this. You can't argue with this type of evidence. This is video evidence. Jesus appeared on Hank Kuhneman's stage. I mean, how can you argue with that? Well, I mean, we didn't we didn't see Jesus. We just saw Hank's reaction, which, you know, <laughs> in my book, it's just as good. Just as good. The evidence is there. So, uh, you know, we've got to go with what Hank says because, well, Hank's a good fella. He wouldn't lie, right? <laughs> oh, no, wait, he would lie. And he is a liar. He's a false prophet. This is not a debate. This is not up for argument. He is a confirmed and verified false prophet who lies in the name of Jesus Christ. And so what you just watched here was a planned episode where he was going to get up there and say, what the heck? Did you folks see that or was, was that just me? Wait a second. I saw somebody with a beard and a mustache. So Surely it must be Jesus. And everybody in the audience just said, wow, that's amazing. Jesus is visiting our pastor because he's so powerful. And, and it works. So Hank does these sorts of things uh, because he's a con artist. Nobody saw anything but him. But it's a good thing he was there to tell you about it. But it doesn't stop there. I'm going to bring you over to a dear brother, Matthew 7.15. By the way, if you're not subbed to Matthew 7.15, go find his channel and sub. This guy, I got to tell you, this guy, huh? Matthew 7.15, all right. He's got a great video here. And we're going to play this whole, it's only a minute long, because there's so much here. These con artists, like... Uh, like Johnny Slick here, I'm trying to be nice, uh, they can stuff a lot into 60 seconds when it comes to deceit and, yes, mob threats. Listen to the mob threat at the end here. Uh, or I, I would say it would be equal to something like that. So with that, we're going to play uh, Matthew 715's video, and I want to, again, give him thanks. Um, and so let's give it a listen. Years ago, I was uh, right over there, um, we had a guest speaker at the time, Ed Dufresne. He gets up. He never endorsed anybody as, as standing in, in an office of a prophet. And he, he, he starts preaching. He says, Jesus, I see that. He says, this man 
talking about your pastor, is called as a prophet to this nation but the nations. We had one time Jesus appeared in our church, stood on the stage. I told the church about it, and, uh, you know, some people didn't believe it. And two weeks later, a, a woman comes. This is before the days of the Internet. And she says, why is Jesus standing right here? She announced the exact place that I saw the vision. She described exactly what Jesus was wearing, exactly what he was holding, just like I told the church. And she says, and Jesus says to this man right here, she, this is two powerful things she said, this man and woman are called in the office to be prophets to the nation and the nations of the earth. And then she said, and anyone that touches them are going to be exposed and they'll be like the dust of the wind and they'll blow away and be no more. And she actually spoke that in front of somebody who later rose up to try to hurt the church and they were taken out. You think they would listen. Well, folks, if you ever wanted a crash course in cult leader manipulation and fear intimidation, you just heard it. Joe Pesci here pretty much just told his church and his online followers to never question him, never call him out, don't challenge him, ever. Or you, in fact, may be taken out were the words that he used, taken out. Oh, and by the way, there, there was a couple who did do this, and they apparently were taken out. His words. <laughs> it's just amazing. Look at his face. This guy lives to intimidate and to rule by fear because his narcissism overfloweth. And so he finishes by saying, oh, you think they would listen. Doggone it. I didn't want harm and such evil things to befall, um, you know, befall them, but they, uh, they just insisted on challenging or trying to hurt the church. And, uh, you know, look at his face. He didn't want it to happen, but nevertheless, there it is. I wish they would have just listened. And you can hear his audience saying, wow, look at Hank. He's so powerful. The only thing he's missing is his wizard staff. But I suppose that's next. And then he, he literally says, well, you're going to blow away like the dust and be no more. Isn't that amazing? So... Definitely worth including this on this week's episode of Friday Fruit Clips. This man is just atrocious. This is not of God. We are told, let me show you some scripture here. In 1 John chapter 4, look at verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Well, Hank says don't do this. Hank says do not obey the word of God. Do not try the spirits. This is what he's saying. And the fact that Hank Kuhneman is an actual false prophet uh, makes this even worse because this tells you why he's saying this. He doesn't want you to challenge him uh, because, in fact, he is very, very guilty. So, and I'll just do this in real time. You can also come over to Ephesians chapter 5. We'll go here. And we're going to scroll down to verse 11. And have no fellowships, I'm sorry, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And that means expose them. And that's what I'm doing here. And this, again, is in the book of Ephesians. So really, pray that this man would repent. Pray that he would stop fleecing the flock. Pray that he would stop falsely prophesying, intimidating people, and ruining people's lives and shipwrecking their faith. This man needs to repent. So indeed, pray for him. Pray for his followers that they would awaken. Because this man is, like I said, just atrocious, the way that he operates and behaves. His ministry is fake. And these are the wolves that Jesus warned us about in Matthew 24. So with that, let's move on. Now, I'm about to play you a clip from international heretic Todd White. Now, many of you have heard this before, so just indulge me. But many have not heard this. And I want to give you a warning graphic okay so if you are of a sensitive nature skip ahead this is very graphic in fact out of all the fruity clips i've ever heard of heretics and false prophets and false teachers this would probably rank easily in the top three this is how bad this is and so we wanted to make sure that we documented this and at least got it into the friday fruit clip series 
so that it will always be preserved because Todd White needs to be avoided. Now in the clip, just to set it up, he's talking about men and what they watch on the internet. Okay, you get it. So try to follow along. Here we go. Like, well, Lord, to be transparent, I got news for you. Nothing's hidden. He sits in the theater room of your soul and sees everything that goes across your screen, guys. Your whole pornography thing, you think like no one knows it, God's watching it with you. He waits till you reach climax. God, if he only knew me, if he only knew me, if he only desired to know me, I would be his climax. <laughs> yeah, this was that evil and very hard to hear, wasn't it? It was truly atrocious. Now, I can't think that this man is that stupid that he doesn't know. So I think it's safe to conclude that this was intentional and it is truly an outright satanic attack to stand up on stage and to teach people that God watches porn, much less with them, uh, truly is evil. It's an attack on God. This man is an enemy of God. And so I don't think I can add too much more to this rather than to just let this stand on its own as, you know, being documented and as a warning for all of us to avoid Todd White. I really pray this guy would come out publicly and repent not only for his fake ministry, but also this particular alleged message on its own. He needs to repent for what he said here publicly and go before the Lord and repent because I, I truly shudder for this man's soul based on what he said just here, even before you get to the rest of this guy's ministry. So, so we're going to leave this here. We're going to move on. My spirit went up and I literally went to the throne room of God. I won't say much, but I'll say something that's important for me to teach you here today. Yeah, okay. How did the audience not bust out laughing when she said she was going to teach them something? <laughs> Look at her. So here we've got Paula, I'll say anything for money, White, as she successfully navigates this room and deceives seasoned grown-ups by telling her fake story of, traveling to heaven and getting right into the throne room with God. And these people are just like, really? Did this really happen? She's very successful. But uh, anyway, I want you to pay attention as we listen to her to a couple of things. First note, the soft music playing in the background. Every good false teacher, storyteller, well, they've got to have that emotional music to better manipulate their victims. And also pay attention to the audience. They listen to every word. Grown men throwing out biblical doctrine as they sit under the authority of this woman who is biblically unqualified to be a pastor, who is on her third marriage. Nope, we're just going to just go ahead and believe her because, well, she's speaking, and we prefer the fantasy rather than sound doctrine. So let's listen to Paula, and we'll comment as we go. So in that divine encounter, I don't know how long I was there. I just know that kind of power is almost impossible for a natural body to contain. And as I went to the throne room of God, first I saw there was a mist that was coming off the water. And I went to the throne of God. And I didn't see God's face clearly, but I saw the face of God. Now, Try to imagine the magnitude of blasphemy here. Now, this woman, again, who will say anything for money, is telling grown men, men who should be sound in doctrine, that she, even above Moses, has seen the face of God Almighty and lived. Now, you've got men and women sitting, listening to Paula White, and no one stands up and challenges her. Nobody stands up to defend the word of God. They just sit there like putzes and jelly rolls, and they allow themselves to be owned by this lying Jezebel, who apparently just 
floats and operates at will saying anything without any opposition or challenge. It's amazing. Now, in the book of Exodus, chapter 33, if we scroll down, this is when Moses is with God. Just go right to verse 20. And this is God speaking. He said, Thou canst not see my face, for thou shalt be no man to see me and live. Notice there's no asterisk there or additional verse that says, Except for a woman in the distant future, one Paula White, she will I bring to my throne room, and she will see my face and live because she's super awesome and chosen by me, and she will rule over men and so on and so forth. She, Moses, she'll live, but not you, Moses. You can't see my face and live, but Paula White will, just so we're clear on things. Wasn't it clear, not like I could see your face clearly, but I knew it was the face of God. And as God began, he put a mantle on me. And it was a very distinct mantle. I had no idea that Apostle had prophesied. I think you said that there was a mantle that was coming upon me. That there was a new mantle coming upon me. And there was a mantle, and I saw it very distinctly. The color was like a, a goldish, but it, did, it was a yellowish goldish a little bit different than your scarf, a little bit brighter than your scarf there. And then I saw the earth for a moment, and then he brought me back and he put me in certain places, one being the White House, one being certain continents. It was a mass move. I didn't come out of that really until the next. All right, so maybe if I summarize everything, I can come to a different conclusion. So let's do that. Here we go. Well, you've got Paula White standing in front of her church. She's telling the story of Paula White and her trip to heaven. Paula White is in the throne room of God. Paula White gets to see God's face. Paula White gets a special gold mantle. Uh, Paula White gets assigned special places and positions in the earth because she is just that important. And all of this incredible information is being brought to you by well, Paula White. She's the one that's telling you, isn't that? Awesome how that works out. So I'm going to go ahead and, and conclude that all of this is true and that there's nothing untrue about it. I'm just going to go ahead and believe Paula White. I mean, who would make this stuff up? Uh, you know, because I'm just going to trust her, trusting her that she's telling us the truth. Of course, this is all silly, isn't it? And it's very, very sad. There, there isn't any force on this earth that could make me believe this woman. She is a liar. And so if you're one of these followers that believe that Paula White is a true teacher or a true pastor, uh, please wake up. Avoid this person. Come away from her. Certainly pray for her. But she is as deceptive as one gets. She lives for money. She lives for fame. And this is who she is. She does not serve Jesus Christ in truth and sincerity. So with that, we're going to close this segment. I just wanted you to see this so you can see how silly this is. How, yes, there are still people out there believing this gobbledygook. It is terrible. Pray for the followers to awaken and come away from this. Deception is rampant. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, next up, we've got Emily. This is Emily. Her channel is called Joy of the Lord. Almost 3,000 subscribers. This particular video has almost 3,600 views. Why do you suppose so many views? Well, because she's a prophet. And this is preferred. So we're going to listen to a couple of her so-called uh, prophecies. And then we are going to 1 John 4, 1 and test the spirits to see indeed if she is of God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So let's listen to the first clip. Okay, so uh, this is what he says um, on 7-10-2023. He says, Oh, I, I had asked him, I said, is there anything that you want to say today, Lord? Is there anything on your heart you want to share? And he said, I do have much to say today. He said, first, I would like to say thank you. He's so sweet. <laughs> our God, our Father. First, I would like to say thank you. He's so sweet. <laughs> our God. Our says, first, I would love, or I would like to thank you for your beautiful worship this morning. I love when you sing praises to me. So... 
He thanked me for his for, for my praise to him. It was just he's so wonderful. And then he says, "Will you tell my children today that I am a proud, proud papa?" All right. So this is very problematic. You can see the outright silliness blooming forth here as we have yet another emerging social media prophetess portraying Jesus like just some flopsy regular Joe who, hey, hey I'm, I'm right here. I'm going to give you prophecy. And by the way, Emily, thank you. Your worship of me was awesome. So I just want to come out publicly and thank you because that's normal when right God thanks the creation. And then Emily giggles. <laughs> oh, he's just so sweet. He's sweet. And then later on, portrays God as a proud papa. I'm just such a proud papa. And that's normal talk, right? And he's just a regular dude. Now, this is a pattern with these false prophets. They degrade God down to just this dude, just this guy. It's just all so silly. And then, you know, they giggle and they get giddy. And it's kind of like, well, Jesus is like a boyfriend. And that's what it is. And there's a lot of blushing because, you know, Jesus is like Fabio. So <laughs> this girls, girls, this is what it is. Don't you wish you were a prophetess like me? And he's just this wonderful guy and he tickles me. And <laughs> it's all just so cute. It's just sick. But you see this emerging. A lot of this has to do with the carnal bride of Christ movement. And it just mixes and jumbles into these fantasies where these women gravitate because they it's almost like a sickness here. And I'm not gonna I'm gonna be very careful what I say here, but there's something very sick about this. And so with that, let's listen to the next clip. Um also, really quickly, I had a dream a couple days before I got this word. And um it was just a quick, simple dream. I knew it was prophetic. Um, and basically, I went into this house. It wasn't my own, but my belongings were in there. And there was just a whole, everything was just like in suitcases and stuff. And, but, but everything was just in shambles. Everything in this house was in chaos. It was just a mess. It was messy. And I was like overwhelmed. And I'm like, what am I going to do? I can't fix this. Like, this is, so, I mean, it was just crazy chaos. And, um, the whole house and I'm just like what happened like I and I was really really overwhelmed and I'm like Lord what do I do like how am I gonna fix this I can't like this is a mess and then I looked out in this I looked outside and and um in the sky there was Jesus sitting in a recliner kicking back in a recliner chilling totally relaxed totally chilling out in a recliner in the clouds he was in a recliner relaxing he was all chilling. <laughs> and so. Now try to imagine, if you can, the level of irreverence this woman has for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is buffoonery on full display. Now, if you're wondering if this is blasphemous, yes. Oh, yes, it is. And let me tell you why. This woman is teaching thousands and thousands to degrade Jesus in a very unbiblical public way. Here she puts Jesus in a recliner, what, like Archie Bunker? And he's just, you know, chills and relax, hanging tan on a cloud. And she just finds it so funny. You know, she tries to do some sort of lesson that, hey, if Jesus is chill and lax in a recliner up in the clouds, bro, you should be too because we're just surfing the waves of relaxation. And yes, you could be just like me, a goofy reclining Jesus that is not the biblical Jesus, but hang 10, bro. And this is what she's doing. So even though it sounds just harmless and goofy, it is a false doctrine. She's teaching all who would listen to her to be irreverent, to not revere God as holy, immeasurably holy and fearful. Instead, she's got Fabio Jesus in a recliner. What's next? I don't know. It is very, very sad. And so we do expose people like this. Now, I don't hate Emily, but she needs to stop. 
this is nonsense and it's blasphemy and she's harming people with her fake fantasy prophetic visions or whatever they are and it has nothing to do with the salvation or for that matter what jesus christ did at calvary it is just goofiness and it's got to stop and i have to guess that perhaps maybe i shouldn't say i have to guess but maybe giving her the benefit of the benefit of the doubt that she just doesn't really realize the harm that she's doing by participating in this end times delusion so pray for her and pray that she will stop doing this my goodness jesus in a recliner in the clouds wow what's next let's move on welcome everybody this is cat kerr don't faint yes it's really me this is not a fake i'm not a fake wannabe i am it okay it's really me in case you wondered because there's so many fake ones out there right now i just can't get over that all right folks so here's here's cat kerr she's back and yes it's the real cat kerr there's only one commander of the spirit force and that's her oh i wish she had a theme song or something commander cat of the spirit force she battles hurricanes with her wizard stick there she is flying through the air <laughs> i am so sorry i can't help it i told you if you don't laugh you'll go crazy but cat is back and she's assuring us that yes it is she is the real cat cur as there's many fakes out there not sure what she means by that maybe she sees something we don't i haven't seen any fake cat curs of you uh in any case we're just doing a, a little focus piece on her because of something which we're going to show you right now this is one of the things one of the most favorite things we have and i have to know the holy spirit gives me a lot of things to put on items that's him he gave me this one which i absolutely love right here can they see it jen this says, I don't do demons. Now, here is Kat, and she's holding up one of her products for sale. And it says, I don't do demons. Now, many of you have seen this before. And if you come over to her website, there's good news. Here it is right here. It's a insulated tumbler, normally $20 on sale for $18. And you, too, can own one of Kat's I Don't Do Demons tumblers. Now, here is Robin Bullock, and you can even see he wears one of Kat's little buttons here that says, I Don't Do Demons. So I just find this very ironic because it's very easy to determine that, indeed, they do do demons. In fact, they both absolutely produce doctrines of demons because they are both false prophets and they make their livings lying in the name of jesus christ and telling lies and by the way they tell lies and these are unbiblical doctrines of demons doctrines of devils so cat can hold up all the cups she wants and robin can wear all the pins and badges he wants that says i don't do demons but in fact they do do demons they fellowship with demons and if you come to first timothy chapter 4 look at verse 1. now the spirit speaketh ex expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and what doctrines of devils so again when you see alleged prophets like robin bullock and cat kerr wearing garb and drinking from vessels that say i don't do demons it's a lie they actually do because first timothy 4 1 pretty much about them so there you have it thanks cat well that's going to do it for this episode of friday fruit clips i sure do thank you for stopping by remember don't fear the false prophets right they have no power over you serve jesus christ in truth and sincerity and love the lord your god with all your heart soul mind and strength until next time take care and god bless